In this tutorial, we're going to cover the ribbon splicing case, and in this case here, we're going to be talking about the Fujikara 70R Plus. Um, only slight differences between the R case and the S case. Same thing, same features about the top of the case. Uh, if you needed to use it out, outside somewhere or you needed a little extra support to be able to lift it up, you can put your splicing machine on the top here. We open this up. We'll see a lot of the very same features that you would have seen in the previous case. Also, one thing we didn't cover in the previous case, Kim wipes. We discussed what a Kim wipe is. Kim wipe is a lintless wiper that helps us to be able to clean the fiber. We use this with alcohol, the dauber bottle within your toolkit. We'll harp on this numerous different times. The alcohol that we use and we have available is isopropyl alcohol, 99.9% .9 alcohol. The reason we use 99.9% .9 that number uh, signifies the amount of moisture, water, anything other than isopropyl alcohol within its contents. Uh, you can't buy this in a store anymore. We used to be able to buy it in some of the big box stores, um, but for the purposes of what we work with, we want to get all the moisture off from the cable and we also want to make sure we're not leaving moisture behind that can fog up and cloud the inside of the splicing machines, microscope, mirrors, and lenses. It's more, it's very important that we only ever use 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. The Kim wipes are very important uh, in that they don't leave a lint behind when the pre uh, splice arc happens. If there's lint on the on the fiber itself, that lint eventually over time will create a smoke or it'll create fogging on the fiber, uh, causing uh, splices to not uh, be correct. Uh, lo high loss on your splice, it'll also create a smoke that will fog up your mirrors and your lenses, causing uh, uh, undue or unnecessary maintenance on that and cleaning. The other items that you'd see within the splicing machine for the ribbon splicing is a ribbon stripper. The ribbon stripper is, uh, this one happens to be battery powered. There's a power supply for that that's generally within the same bin. There are the chips that are used in order to be able to hold down the fiber. These chips are specific for this particular machine. They aren't interchangeable with other machines in most case scenarios, unless of course you're using maybe the 70R instead of the 70R plus. There are other different types of chips that we keep available. So if we were doing connectorized ends or anything along that line, this one also has a precision Phillips screwdriver, the splicing machine, one thing to note about the splicing machine, if you notice that I'm taking it in and out of here, there is actually on these particular models, there's actually a hold down here or a, a tab here that you can put your thumb into to lift the splicing machine out. Also in the ribbon splicing machine, you'll see a metal brush such as this one here. It's the, uh, the fine little metal hairs on there. It's used to be able to pull debris out of the V grooves that are utilized to hold the fiber in place. The shrink tubes for ribbon fiber splicing are different than the shrink tubes that you would see for single strand splicing. Um, they are extremely cost, uh, they are very costly, so we use them uh, sparingly. We want to make sure that they are good splices before we move forward. The cleaver looks a lot like the cleaver from a, a standard or a, s a single strand fiber cleaver. This particular cleaver here is set up to take the chips that we have here. Once we've prepped out our ribbon, stripped it down, we would place it inside one of these chips and then this chip would then go inside of the cleaver. The cleaver is a one motion cleaver, meaning uh, once, we, uh, once we have the chip in place, we drop this down, we press it through, it'll score and cleave the, all 12 fibers at one time. Also within the case, you'll find a power supply. The power supply is so that we can use an AC electrical cord and connect the fiber splicing machine up to a uh, standard 110 electrical outlet. And also you'll have a battery. Generally, there's only enough room within the kit in order to be able to hold a power supply or a battery within the splicing machine. Um, and then the, uh, the other unit would then be stored in the lower portion of this kit. And then as well, there is always a, a charging cord that will help to connect the power supply to the battery in order to be able to charge the battery. 
This particular unit does have this strap. Not sure why the technician doesn't have this strap located on the fiber uh, splicing machine, but it's likely because this is more often than not used within the head end of a uh, central office for the purposes of, of um, backbone mass splicing as opposed to in the field where we would be uh, taking ribbon and making it into single strand and then uh, fusing it to bufferized uh, single strand splices.